Okay, so let's just get the elephant in the room out the way so we can actually talk about the chapter as a whole because the only quote-unquote problematic aspect of this chapter in particular because there was a lot of stuff that actually went down in this chapter, but the one thing, the one complaint that a lot of people are saying, and to a certain degree I understand it, is the fact that Actologia, when he caught on to the ship, he was affected by the fact that he's a dragon slayer and the motion sickness caught him. Now, you know in fairy tale the dragon slayers do get motion sickness regardless. It's different if they're, you know, just normally maneuvering around. But when it comes to being on like an object of some sort and kind of moving, they get the motion sickness. And Acnologia was indeed affected once Ichio busted the machine that stops the motion sickness. That's the part of the chapter that people are like, really? Acnologia getting affected by motion sickness? But even though it does seem stupid as hell, I will 100% agree with that. I'm like, really? A battle-ridden fucking monster like Acnologia affected by that? Nevertheless, it's really not BS because he's a Dragon Slayer and it's been established from the very start of the series that Dragon Slayers can get motion sickness, especially the fact that I'm imagining Acnologia his whole life, he's never really had any problems of having to use machinery of any sort to move around because he's been a dragon for so damn long that he never really had to experience this, so to him it was kind of like, whoa, what the fuck is going on? And he latched off. Still seems a bit corny, still seems a bit like, really? Like this monster? And I would even argue to a certain degree that... Even so, with motion sickness, is that really going to be enough to affect somebody like Acnologia that's been through probably the most craziest battles of, of sorts, you know what I'm saying? So, that's the only part of the chapter that was kind of like, mm, but nevertheless, it still made sense. So, you can't really go against it and say all oh, that straight up bullshit when Dragon Slayers have had that problem for the entirety of the series. I mean, episode 1, chapter 1, not so was getting motion sickness being on the train, you know what I'm saying? So, that's already been established, so let's get that out the way. Because, to be honest with you, I felt as though this chapter, this chapter alone, was a fucking awesome some chapter and it did some great things it also solidified some horrible things weren't happening as well like this little ball the ravenous of time the time lapse whatever the heck you want to call it is not well as of right now anyway going to be the decido factor to get rid of acnologia because Zeref made sure he crossed his t's and dotted his i's and that's very good as well and it feels as though the good aspects of fairy tale and i think it's been the case for a long time but it's just always exemplified when you see parts like this the villains and how they you know the, the real villains i'm talking about not the spriggan and you know those people i'm talking about the real big dogs like Zeref and Acnologia, those people are the ones that defy the BS in fairy tale and make it actually worthwhile and make it good shit because Zeref was like, bro, I, I sealed that shit up when my Neo Eclipse is ready, then we do it. Other than that, yo, that shit is closed. So great planning on Zeref's part. And also, we, we, <laughs> we dodged the bullet with that one. Now, that's not to say that's not gonna happen in the future because Anna's like, we gotta rip open the rabbit this time. And she's like some Hulk Hogan shit. Ooh, like, yeah, you know, she, she was on, on that level. We gonna rip this shit open but I'm still like just think about it for a second like we just got through something that could have been horrible because bottom line if that's the way Acnologia goes out chasing you know Ichia and them and, and falls into a fucking trap that's that sounds horrible and also the fact that Acnologia finally caught up to the ship took you long enough buddy but nevertheless with the speed and capabilities that he has he should have been able to catch up right so catching up to the ship the, again, nauseousness and, you know, motion sickness bullshit was there, but at the very least, it showcased one, he didn't get bullshitted with the ravenous of time sealing him up and stuff like that, and also the fact that he was finally able to catch up. I mean, yo, you're supposed to be a fast-ass dragon. What are you doing getting bodied in speed by some flying ship, you know what I'm saying? So, good stuff in that regard as well. Then, I want to talk a little bit about this part, and I'm sure that Mashima isn't going to go this direction as much as I think it'd be cool as shit, but I'm sure Mashima isn't gonna go this way and that's the fact that when Wendy is talking and she's like man I can't remember you Anna I just can't and she wants to Anna's like oh that's okay don't worry in due time you will and th there was a little shot in there a little manga panel after Ichia said something came into the room and he says something then you look at Anna and she kind of looked a little bit devious now obviously it could just be the art style it could just be that she was shocked or she's pissed because she wanted to trap this guy and get rid of him or whatever personally theory time right here just like I made a theory last week another theory and I would love for this to come to fruition because it sounds really really good is that Anna is actually not a good person and the reason why they can't remember is not because oh we must have just been lost in time has more so to do with she made sure that she's not remembered because if she was 
then it, it, it'd be a problem, because if you think about it in the flashbacks, when the fuck, and again, of course, it could be just that, hey, Hero, you know, shoehorned this shit in, that's why we never saw, but, you know, you would think that Igneel would have mentioned her, Igneel would have said something by now, or one of the other dragons would have gave some prior knowledge of some sort, but we didn't get any of that, so I'm really hoping, and again, this is a far-fetched thing, it could totally just be, eh, whatever, and she'll do something heroic, and something along the lines of that will be like, oh, shit, Anna was incredibly good, but I think it'd be great and a nice twist if all along Anna was trying to accomplish her own goals which what could that be the only thing I can think of is maybe she's trying to resurrect that crazy villain that put the curse on Zeref to begin with I can't pronounce his name to save my life but that would be a crazy ass nice twist that I would love and also would explain why things just seem so like so Anna was here and she was a good person but she was never mentioned and she was hiding this whole time because the time wasn't right. Like it would make a lot more sense for her to actually be a villain and kind of be like one of the catalysts to bringing forth the destruction of humanity and you know Magnolia and all this shit. That'd be kind of cool but it, it, it just was kind of like a little bit odd in the beginning when Wendy was talking again about trying to remember her. So I would love that to happen. Will it happen? Who knows? Probably not but little theory in there. You never know right? That'd be dope as shit, I mean, you even got a little bit of Jalal saying, I don't know how much I should trust of what she's saying in her persona and stuff like that, like, I don't know, and Eris is like, well, I trust her, because we don't got nothing else fucking to help us right now, so fuck it, I trust her, and he's like, oh, okay, you know, just give me some ass, and I'll trust her too, so, hey, you never know, it'd be interesting, then Lucy and them did the pitiful mistake of opening that book, now, will it be a mistake in the end, who knows, because of the effects at the end of the chapter, but I still think, like, you should have talked it over with somebody wise, somebody a lot wiser than Lucy, gray and fucking happy like y'all should have thought maybe who, who's smart enough you know what what Portia love, that old lady like maybe you should have took it to her and asked her opinion beforehand then just hey let's just open up this fucking book that Igneel said don't open up to begin with but they opened it up and that caused something awesome in the end of the chapter that really got me excited something that I thought was a lost thing that I, I wanted to happen but it seems as though potentially we're gonna have some cool shit, cause at the end of the chapter, look this though, Natsu was quote unquote dragonized in his fight against Zeroth, and I ain't gonna lie, that, that got me excited, like see, people always get the misconception that I'm just this big time fairy tale hater, I wouldn't own a good majority of the anime if I wasn't a fucking fairy tale fan, or a good chunk of the manga if I wasn't a big fairy tale fan, or I like fairy tale, it's just when shit is bullshit, I'm gonna call it out, bottom line, but yeah, this shit got me hype as fuck, seeing him go into that dragon form, I don't think that was easy. And D, I think that was more so Dragon Shed. I don't know why would there be any dragon writings in the book of END, but it looked as though half of him went dragon, but not really END, if that kind of makes any sense. Now, it could be that that is what his END form looks like, or half of it or something, but he started turning into a dragon, but he still seemed to have some of his sanity in there, because when he was going END back, you know, when him and Grey squabbled and shit like that, he was more so just like a mindless monster, kind of like what Zeroth was doing in this chapter, or last week's chapter, not this chapter, he was kind of still sane, but like, you know, he kept on, oh, Zeroth, Zeroth, but in this chapter, he was kind of still there, I mean, he did tell the first, maybe it's like, yo, get out the way, shit's about to get, you know, lit as a motherfucker up in here, but it still seemed as though he was kind of there, so maybe this is something different from END entirely, maybe we could have a combination, depending on how far they go with this book, I mean, the spells just started fucking blouting out of that fucking book but maybe that could just be his dragon eyes form and then eventually we can mix the and or something along the lines of that either way that was hype as fuck and a really cool build up because to be honest with you i felt this though minus i guess two things and it's like whatever lucy and gray and happy are dumb as fuck for opening the book to begin with but it was a desperate situation so that was kind of uh and the whole thing with acnologia getting motion sickness it still made sense but it kind of felt corny like this is a monster right now. How is he getting motions? Like, you know what I'm saying? But it does make sense because that's Dragon Slayer thing. You know what I'm saying? That's a thing that's been in the manga for a long time. But aside from that, this chapter was awesome. I really appreciated the fact that Actinologia was embodied by some random fucking plot device, the Ravenous of Time. We got a little bit of mystery there with like Jalal questioning if we can trust Ana or not. Mavis showing up at the end. Natsu seemingly being dragonized. Now he can really take on Zeroth this time around. Like a lot of cool shit and a lot of great build up. And honestly, I really, really with this chapter i thought this chapter was awesome again a couple of minor nitpicks there but it wasn't a 10 but i say it's still high up there for a fairy tale chapter 
for a fairy tale chapter, I'd say it's damn near a great chapter. Maybe you'd argue differently. I'd love to see your response in the comments, but personally, I'd say eight and a half to a nine for this chapter. Maybe I'm bugging. Maybe, you know, t tell me why I'm bugging, though. Don't just say, yo, you wildin', bro. This shit was ass. Like, tell me why you thought it was ass. If you do think so, or if you agree with me, then tell me why you agree with me. You know, great stuff right there. That's how conversation gets built up, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, honestly, dope shit. Kind of curious what you guys think about certain aspects of the chapter. What do you think about Act Logia getting the motion sickness? Did you feel as though it was BS? Also, what do you think about him catching up finally to the ship? Should he have done it way sooner? Personally, I think so, but hey, he caught up. Also, what do you think about the ravenous of time kind of being sealed and honestly saying, nah, we gotta break that shit free. Like, how are you planning on breaking open a magical spell? Do you think potentially that my theory regarding Anna being evil, that's why nobody remembers her, that's why she hasn't struck until now because she has this master grand plan? And if so, if she is evil, what do you think is her whole end game? Is it to bring forth that monster that put the curse on Zeref to begin with? And what do you think is about to go down with Natsu seemingly dragonized? You think that was dragonized? Is it E and D? And your overall thoughts of the chapter? Again, I felt as though it was a banging ass fairy tale chapter. But that's all I have for this one. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you liked anything I had to say or enjoyed the video, drop me a like. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you want more from me, make sure to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and stalk my Facebook to get more when the video ends. I'm Fennel World, and as always, people, have an awesome day.